Yo, what's up? Today I'll be remaking the drop to Walking Royce's track Word. I'll be using Ableton Serum, so let's jump right into it and get this started. Alright guys, before I get started, let's listen to what I have and we'll go from there. Alright, let's get started. Now just a disclaimer everyone, this is a remake and not the original, so I just want you to know that I don't have the rights to this song and I'm just making it as a part of an exercise, so please don't sue me, don't get me with the content ID, and hopefully we won't have any problems. Okay. Um, the first thing that I wanted to talk about is the bass line. So to make the bass line, I just listened to the track over and over again. I looked through the spectrometer right here. A good way to gauge where your bass line is at is I'll enable the clip and I'll just solo it. And I'll just look at where the bass is hitting at the highest. So I figured out by using our friend google.com um, what key this song is in. So Walker and Royce word key BPM. All right. Then now we just go to here, beat port, sick. And then E major, 125 BPM. And that was hella easy. That's how easy making music is nowadays. Just go on the internet. So now with this information, we go back to our project. We know that it's an E, so we go to the bass line, we put some E's. So the pattern. I listened to the song over and over again until I, I got a good idea of what it sounds like. I'm not 100% sure if it's accurate, but to my ears this is like more or less the right pattern. So uh, pretty easy patterns, just hitting the E, occasionally going up to the F, and right before the, the, uh, the 8 loop is over, I went up an octave just to give it a little bounce, and then went back to the E. And we just repeat that over and over again. House music. So we just gonna listen to the bass line. We got this right here. Now, how did I make the bass sound? Well, let's dive into Serum. I got a sine wave right here and a square wave um, with the gentle cutoff of 12 dB low. So with these kind of sounds, um, you want to make the bass sound really gritty, but with the filtering, you kind of get rid of all the higher end and just retain the lower end. So if you listen to this without the filter, there's a lot more noise going on. And I wanted to, well, besides the processing, I wanted to focus more on the lower end, you know, between that sub bass range to maybe the low mids, just a little bit in the mids, but not, not too much. Um, these kind of sounds, it's easy to go too ham on the distortion. Like for example, if we don't have a filter and we go really hard on the distortion. Right, it starts sounding like a flabby ass tire or something. We don't want that. We don't want that. We want it to sound nice and rounded and centered around the lower frequencies. Yeah. So you can look through the processing um, because free download all the patches I go through will be on a free download link. Um, I won't be giving away the project this time, but all the init presets, which means I made them, um, will be down for free. All right, next, let's dive into the synth sounds because that's the core of this drop. Um, I wanted to do this song because it has a bunch of weird sounds and I thought it was a fun exercise to try and recreate every section. So, you know what, let's listen to the original real fast, and then you can tell me if you think it's close or not. Let me know in the comments below. Let's listen. Alright, so that's just the first 8 bar, and then this is mine. 
Alright, so not bad, right? I think I nailed it pretty close. Um, just a couple sounds might sound a little different, like the drums, but overall I think the ideas are there, so I'm gonna keep on watching, stick around, and I can talk through how I made all the sounds. So the first sound is that pitch saw lead thing that comes in on the one. Um, I used two sine waves here. One is detuned at two unison, and one is just a single unison saw wave for the center. And uh, the unison at two basically gives it a little bit of width. And since it sounds kind of detuned, it, it gives it like the illusion that it's like wobbling. And I also gave it a slight pitch bend automation. So what's cool with Ableton 10 is that you can select areas, right click, and you can insert shapes. Once you insert a shape, you can move it around, you can shrink it, or you can reduce it or make it fatter. So it's cool. It's it's a great way to get some new ideas out. Um, I never used this before 10.1 since, and it didn't exist. But it's a it's a good way to try some new sound design techniques out. Like you can put this on a sweep, you can put this on a pitch bend, you can put it on like pretty much anything, and get some weird effects out of it. So if you listen to this that I recreated, so I gave it a little bit of increase in pitch bend because I don't think the original does that, but I like that it's changing a little bit. So that's the first song. Then we move it on to the second part of the drop. Go to the original. So we got that which are these wobs right here. If we go into the patch, we got a saw wave with a basic MDC. Not quite sure what that stands for, but basically they're all basic shapes. Um, basic shapes are the best for these kind of songs. I found out that if you try to complicate things, it just sounds way too like bass housey or night bassy. And if you wanted to have that just low end focus without much distortion in the higher ends, a lot of the basic shapes with filtering, like this MG Low 12, is a good way to do the sound design for this kind of music. So, again, I have some extra things on the effects rack, which I kind of tuned in as I was making the sound. It's not something that you know I knew in advance that I was going to do, but typically distortion is almost 90% of the time you'll, you'll be using it for electronic music. Um, reverb, I'm not a big fan of the reverb for Serum. Um, it sounds too metallic -y in my opinion, and I usually run a dry signal through another reverb, like my Vala Vintage Verb, which is my favorite reverb, and the one that I bought first, so that's why I like it a lot. But typically, reverb, I will keep it on an external VST, and then EQ again to roll off the higher end. So that gives you the whoop sound. <laughs> And it sounds kind of weak alone, but in the context, it definitely sounds stronger. Burn, 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 burn. Then next, we have that weird droning sound. Uh, Alright, and I'm going to admit, I couldn't recreate it that well. Um, let's see what I have compared to that. I'm going to play a little bit far back. Burn, 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 burn. Alright, so... It sounds kind of there. I know it's not 100% accurate, but I think 80%, 85%, somewhere around there. Um, I know for sure that there's probably some S FM going on, unless it was just a sample. But I try to make it from scratch. So if we dive into the patch right here, I got two sine waves, FMing, typical way to get that metallic y sound with a nice low pass MG18 going on here, automated with the. LFO here. So basically the automation gives it that kind of rolling sound. If we dive into the automation here, you can see that I give it a little staircase going on. So the first sound hits at that one half. And then I have it go at a 30 second rate. Then eighth. Then back to the half. So typically you can draw your automations here, but I like to have more flexibility around it because I realize that when I work, if I put too much work into perfecting this section, I don't get much out of the actual song because I'm just so focused on like getting this LFO perfect and I lose sight of like the entire song structure. So 
That's why I love automating in lane and I like changing things up as I go. So that's the FM sound. If you want to mess around with it, feel free to mess around with the settings. Um, usually you want to change the octaves or the amount of FM that one is feeding into the other. So I'll just give you a little example here. If I change this, a pitch up. I actually like that sound, but for this song, it wasn't it. So typically for like bass house and night bass, you, you want to use that kind of sounds and give it a nice little reverb. And then FM. You get some you get some funky harmonics. So don't mess with the FM too much. Um, I'm having it automate slightly because I wanted to give because the sound changes characteristics over time. So I I didn't want it to just sound like the same sound. So I gave it a slight modulation here. But yeah, modulating is good. So moving on to the next sound, we got the wubs. Womp womp which we already talked about, so we're gonna just move on to the laser perk things. So the laser perk things is pretty easy to make. Um, let's just listen to the original. Alright, and then this is what I have. Alright, now that one, I'm pretty confident that it sounds a lot closer. So let's dive into laser pitch. The secret with a laser sounding pluck or lead or whatever you want to call this is you automate this guy right here, the course. So what's happening is I'm having the course automate the pitch. So you can see that it goes up. You get that with like that sliding up sound. And then once it comes down, it goes back to the original pitch. And you can see this guy's working really hard. And that is because there's hella shit going on. So I'm basically automating the rate at which it goes from zero to four octaves, which is the attack. So you can see over time, over time, there we go. So by allowing the pitch to grow at a different rate, it sounds like it's singing more than just like a constant stab of the, it's just like, pew, 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 pew. so that was what I dissected from listening to the sound. Um, if you want to mess around with the laser pitch, again, you can download all the patches for free. So check out the description below and subscribe if you want. And I think we're actually done with all the sounds. Thank you all for sticking around to the very, very end. I hope the tutorial was helpful. And if not, you know, you got some free patches. So go download them, use them in your music. And I hope to see you all next time. Peace.